Seleucus I Nicator was one of the Diadochi, having previously served as an infantry general under Alexander the Great. He eventually assumed the title of Basileus and established the Seleucid Empire over much of the territory in the Near East which Alexander had conquered. After the death of Alexander in June 323 BC, Seleucus initially supported Perdiccas, the regent of Alexander's empire, and was appointed commander of the Companions and Chiliac at the partition of Babylon in 323 BC. However, after the outbreak of the Wars of the Diadochi in 322, Perdiccas' military failures against Ptolemy in Egypt led to the mutiny of his troops in Pelusium. Perdiccas was betrayed and assassinated in a conspiracy by Seleucus, Pedon and Antigenes in Pelusium sometime in either 321 or 320 BC. At the partition of Triparadesis in 321 BC, Seleucus was appointed satrap of Babylon under the new regent Antipater. But almost immediately, the wars between the Diadochi resumed and Antigonus forced Seleucus to flee Babylon. Seleucus was only able to return to Babylon in 312 BC with the support of Ptolemy. From 312 BC, Seleucus ruthlessly expanded his dominions and eventually conquered the Persian and Median lands. Seleucus ruled not only Babylonia, but the entire enormous eastern part of Alexander's empire, always lying in wait for the neighboring nations, strong in arms and persuasive in council. He, Seleucus, acquired Mesopotamia, Armenia, Seleucid, Cappadocia, Persis, Parthia, Bactria, Arabia, Tapauria, Sogdia, Arachosia, Hyrcania, and other adjacent peoples that had been subdued by Alexander, as far as the river Indus, so that the boundaries of his empire were the most extensive in Asia after that of Alexander. The whole region from Phrygia to the Indus was subject to Seleucus, Apain, the Syrian wars Seleucus or wars took him as far as India, where, after two years of war, he made peace with the Indian emperor Chandragupta Maurya, and exchanged his eastern satrapies in the Indus River Valley for a considerable force of 500 war elephants which would play a decisive role against Antigonus at the Battle of Ipsus in 301 BC and against Lysimachus at the Battle of Choropedium in 281 BC. The Indians occupy, in part, some of the countries situated along the Indus, which formerly belonged to the Persians. Alexander deprived the Ariani of them, and established their settlements of his own. But Seleucus Nicator gave them to Sandrocotis in consequence of a marriage contract, and received in return 500 elephants, Strabo, Geographicus Seleucus of victories against Antigonus and Lysimachus left the Seleucid dynasty virtually unopposed in Asia and in Anatolia. However, Seleucus also hoped to take control of Lysimachu European territories, primarily Thrace and Macedon itself. But upon arriving in Thrace in 281 BC, Seleucus was assassinated by Ptolemy Seranus, who had taken refuge at the Seleucid court with his sister Lysandra. The assassination of Seleucus destroyed Seleucid prospects in Thrace and Macedon, and paved the way for Ptolemy Seranus to absorb much of Lysimachu former power in Macedon. Seleucus was succeeded by his son Antiochus I as ruler of the Seleucid Empire. Seleucus founded a number of new cities during his reign, including Antioch and in particular Seleucia on the Tigris, the new capital of the Seleucid Empire, a foundation that eventually depopulated Babylon, youth and family. Seleucus was the son of Antiochus. Historian Junianus Justinus claims that Antiochus was one of Philip II of Macedon's generals but no such general is mentioned in any other sources, and nothing is known of his supposed career under Philip. It is possible that Antiochus was a member of an upper Macedonian noble family. Seleucus her mother was supposedly called Laodice, but nothing else is known of her. Later, Seleucus named a number of cities after his parents. 
Sir Lucas was born in Europos, located in the northern part of Macedonia. Just a year before his birth the Peonians invaded the region. Philip defeated the invaders and only a few years later utterly subdued them under Macedonian rule. Sir Lucas' a year of birth is unclear. Justin claims he was 77 years old during the Battle of Choropedium, which would place his year of birth at 358 BC. Apanus tells us Sir Lucas was 73 years old during the battle, which means 354 BC would be the year of birth. Eusebius of his area, however, mentions the age of 75, and thus the year 356 BC, making Seleucus the same age as Alexander the Great. This is most likely propaganda on Seleucus' part to make him seem comparable to Alexander. As a teenager, Seleucus was chosen to serve as the king's page. It was customary for all male offspring of noble families to first serve in this position and later as officers in the king's army. A number of legends, similar to those told of Alexander the Great, were told of Seleucus. It was said Antiochus told his son before he left to battle the Persians with Alexander that his real father was actually the god Apollo. The god had left a ring with a picture of an anchor as a gift to Laodice. Seleucus had a birthmark shaped like an anchor. It was told that Seleucus' sons and grandsons also had similar birthmarks. The story is similar to the one told about Alexander. Most likely the story is merely propagandized by Seleucus, who presumably invented the story to present himself as the natural successor of Alexander. John Melalas tells us Seleucus had a sister called Didymir, who had sons called Nicanor and Nicomedes. It is most likely the sons of fictitious. Didymir might refer to the oracle of Apollo in Didymir near Miletus. It has also been suggested that Ptolemy was actually the uncle of Seleucus. Early career under Alexander the Great In spring 334 BC, as a young man of about 23, Seleucus accompanied Alexander into Asia. By the time of the Indian campaigns beginning in late in 327 BC, he had risen to the command of the Elite Infantry Corps in the Macedonian army, the Shield Bearers, later known as the Silver Shields. It is said that when Alexander crossed the Hydaspes River on a boat, he was accompanied by Perdiccas, Ptolemy I, Sota, Lysimachus and also Seleucus. During the subsequent Battle of the Hydaspes, Seleucus led his troops against the elephants of King Porus. It is likely that Seleucus had no role in the actual planning of the battle. He is also not mentioned as holding any major independent position during the battle, unlike, for example, Craterus, Hephaestion, Pethon and Leonatus, each of whom had sizable detachments under his control. Seleucus a royal high paspaste were constantly under Alexander's iron at his disposal. They later participated in the Indus Valley campaign, in the battles fought against the Malian in the crossing of the Gedrosian Desert. Seleucus also took his future wife, the Persian princess Apamas, with him into India as his mistress, where she gave birth to his eldest son and successor Antiochus I Sota. At the great marriage ceremony at SUSA in the spring of 324 BC, Seleucus formally married Apama, and she later bore him at least two legitimate daughters, Laodice, Apama and a son Accius. At the same event, Alexander married the daughter of Darius III while several other Macedonians married Persian women. After Alexander's death, when the other senior Macedonian officers unloaded their SUSA wives en masse, Seleucus was one of the very few who kept his, and Apama remained his consort and later queen for the rest of her life. Seleucus is mentioned three times in ancient sources before the death of Alexander. He participated in a sailing trip near Babylon, took part in the dinner party of Medios the Thessalian with Alexander and visited the temple of Serapis. In the first of these episodes, Alexander's diadem was blown off his head and landed on some reeds near the tombs of Assyrian kings. Seleucus swam to fetch the diadem back, placing it on his own head while returning to the boat to keep it dry. The validity of the story is dubious. 
The story of the dinner party of Medios may be true, but the plot to poison the king is unlikely. In the final story, Seleucus reportedly slept in the temple of Serapis in the hope that Alexander's health might improve. The validity of this story is also questionable, as Serapis had not been invented at the time. Senior officer under Perdiccas, Alexander the Great died without a successor in Babylon on June 10, 323 BC. His general Perdiccas became the regent of all of Alexander's empire. While Alexander's physically and mentally disabled half-brother Aridaeus was chosen as the next king under the name Philip III of Macedon, Alexander's unborn child was also named his father's successor. In the partition of Babylon, however, Perdiccas effectively divided the enormous Macedonian dominion among Alexander's generals. Seleucus was chosen to command the companion cavalry and appointed first or court Chiliac which made him the senior officer in the royal army after the regent and commander-in-chief Perdiccas. Several other powerful men supported Perdiccas, including Ptolemy, Lysimachus, Peban and Eumenes. Perdiccas' power depended on his ability to hold Alexander's enormous empire together, and on whether he could force the satraps to obey him. War soon broke out between Perdiccas and the other Diadochi. To cement his position, Perdiccas tried to marry Alexander's sister Cleopatra. The first war of the Diadochi began when Perdiccas sent Alexander's corpse to Macedonia for burial. Ptolemy however captured the body and took it to Alexandria. Perdiccas and his troops followed him to Egypt, whereupon Ptolemy conspired with the satrap of Media, Pethon, and the commander of the Algia Aspides. Antigenes, both serving as officers under Perdiccas, and assassinated him. Cornelius Nepos mentions that Seleucus also took part in this conspiracy, but this is not certain. Satrap of Babylon, the most powerful man in the empire after the death of Perdiccas was Antipater. Perdiccas' opponents gathered in Triparadisos, where the empire of Alexander was partitioned again. At Triparadisos the soldiers had become mutinous and were planning to murder their master Antipater. Seleucus and Antigonus, however, managed to prevent this. For betraying Perdiccas, Seleucus was awarded the rich province of Babylon. This decision may have been Antigonus' idea. Seleucus of Babylon was surrounded by Pusistus, the satrap of Persis, Antigenes, the new satrap of Susiana and Pevan of Media. Babylon was one of the wealthiest provinces of the empire, but its military power was insignificant. It is possible that Antipater divided the eastern provinces so that no single satrap could rise above the others in power. After the death of Alexander, Archon of Pella was chosen satrap of Babylon. Perdiccas, however, had had plans to supersede Archon and nominate Dosimus as his successor. During his invasion of Egypt, Perdiccas sent Dosimus along with his detachments to Babylon. Archon waged war against him, but fell in battle. Thus, Dosimus was not intending to give Babylon to Seleucus without a fight. It is not certain how Seleucus took Babylon from Dosimus. But according to one Babylonian chronicle an important building was destroyed in the city during the summer or winter of 320 BC. Other Babylonian sources state that Seleucus arrived in Babylon in October or November 320 BC. Despite the presumed battle, Dosimus was able to escape. Meanwhile, the empire was once again in turmoil. Pethon, the satrap of Media, assassinated Philip, the satrap of Parthia, and replaced him with his brother Eudemus as the new satrap. In the west Antigonus and Eumenes waged war against each other. Just like Pethon and Seleucus, Eumenes was one of the former supporters of Perdiccas. Seleucus' biggest problem was, however, Babylon itself. The locals had rebelled against Archon and supported Dosimus. The Babylonian priesthood had great influence over the region. Babylon also had a sizable population of Macedonian and Greek veterans of Alexander's army. Seleucus managed to win over the priests with monetary gifts and bribes. 
Second War of the Diadochi After the death of Antipater in 319 BC, the satrap of Media began to expand his power. Peban assembled a large army of perhaps over 20,000 soldiers. Under the leadership of Pusistis the other satraps of the region brought together an opposing army of their own. Pithan was finally defeated in a battle waged in Parthia. He escaped to Media, but his opponents did not follow him and rather returned to Susiana. Meanwhile, Eumenes and his army had arrived at Cilicia, but had to retreat when Antigonus reached the city. The situation was difficult for Seleucus. Eumenes and his army were north of Babylon, Antigonus was following him with an even larger army, Pithan was in Media and his opponents in Susiana. Antigenes, satrap of Susiana and commander of the Argyra Spides, was allied with Eumenes. Antigenes was in Cilicia when the war between him and Pithan began. Pithan arrived at Babylon in the autumn or winter of 317 BC. Pithan had lost a large number of troops, but Seleucus had even fewer soldiers. Eumenes decided to march to Susa in the spring of 316 BC. The satraps in Susa had apparently accepted Eumenes' claims of his fighting on behalf of the lawful ruling family against the usurper Antigonus. Eumenes marched his army 300 stadiums away from Babylon and tried to cross the Tigris. Seleucus had to act. He sent two triremes and some smaller ships to stop the crossing. He also tried to get the former high piece of the Argyra Spides to join him, but this did not happen. Seleucus also sent messages to Antigonus. Because of his lack of troops, Seleucus apparently had no plans to actually stop Eumenes. He opened the flood barriers of the river, but the resulting flood did not stop Eumenes. In the spring of 316 BC, Seleucus and Pithan joined Antigonus, who was following Eumenes to Susa. From Susa Antigonus went to Media, from where he could threaten the eastern provinces. He left Seleucus with a small number of troops to prevent Eumenes from reaching the Mediterranean. Sibertius, satrap of Arachosia, saw the situation as hopeless and returned to his own province. The armies of Eumenes and his allies were at breaking point. Antigonus and Eumenes had two encounters during 316 BC, in the battles of Paraitocene and Gabion. Eumenes was defeated and executed. The events of the Second War of the Diadochi revealed Seleucus' ability to wait for the right moment. Blazing into battle was not his style. Escape to Egypt Antigonus spent the winter of 316 BC in Media, whose ruler was once again Pithan. Pithan's lust for power had grown, and he tried to get a portion of Antigonus' troops to revolt to his side. Antigonus, however, discovered the plot and executed Pithan. He then superseded Pusistis as satrap of Persia. In the summer of 315 BC Antigonus arrived in Babylon and was warmly welcomed by Seleucus. The relationship between the two soon turned cold, however, Seleucus punished one of Antigonus' officers without asking permission from Antigonus. Antigonus became angry and demanded that Seleucus give him the income from the province, which Seleucus refused to do. He was, however, afraid of Antigonus and fled to Egypt with fifty horsemen. It is told that Chaldean astrologers prophesied to Antigonus that Seleucus would become master of Asia and would kill Antigonus. After hearing this, Antigonus sent soldiers after Seleucus, who had however first escaped to Mesopotamia and then to Syria. Antigonus executed Blitter, the new subtrap of Mesopotamia, for helping Seleucus. Modern scholars are skeptical of the prophecy story. It seems certain, however, that the Babylon priesthood was against Seleucus. During Seleucus' escape to Egypt, Macedonia was undergoing great turmoil. Alexander the Great's mother Olympias had been invited back to Macedon by Polypershon in order to drive Cassander out. She held great respect among the Macedonian army but lost some of this when she had Philip III and his wife Eurydice killed as well as many nobles, whom she took revenge upon for supporting Antipater during his long reign. Cassandra reclaimed Macedon the following year at Pydna and then had her killed. 
Alexander IV, still a young child, and his mother Roxanne were held guarded at Amphipolis and died under mysterious circumstances in 310 BC, probably murdered at the instigation of Cassander to allow the Diadox to assume the title of kingship, admiral under Ptolemy. After arriving in Egypt, Seleucus sent his friends to Greece to inform Cassander and Lysimachus, the ruler of Thracia, about Antigonus. Antigonus was now the most powerful of the Diadochi, and the others would soon ally against him. The allies sent a proposition to Antigonus in which they demanded that Seleucus be allowed to return to Babylon. Antigonus refused and went to Syria, where he planned to attack Ptolemy in the spring of 314 BC. Seleucus was an admiral under Ptolemy. At the same time he started the siege of Tyros, Antigonus allied with Rhodes. The island had a strategic location and its navy was capable of preventing the Allies from combining their forces. Because of the threat of Rhodes, Ptolemy gave Seleucus a hundred ships and sent him to the Aegean Sea. The fleet was too small to defeat Rhodes, but it was big enough to force Asander, the satrap of Caria, to ally with Ptolemy. To demonstrate to his power, Seleucus also invaded the city of Erythra. Ptolemy, nephew of Antigonus, attacked Asander. Seleucus returned to Cyprus, where Ptolemy I had sent his brother Menelaus along with 10,000 mercenaries and 100 ships. Seleucus and Menelaus began to besiege Kishon. Antigonus sent most of his fleet to the Aegean Sea and his army to Asia Minor. Ptolemy now had an opportunity to invade Syria, where he defeated Demetrius, the son of Antigonus, in the Battle of Gaza in 312 BC. It is probable that Seleucus took part in the battle. Pethon, son of Adenor, whom Antigonus had nominated as the new satrap of Babylon, fell in the battle. The death of Pethon gave Seleucus an opportunity to return to Babylon. Seleucus had prepared his return to Babylon well. After the Battle of Gaza Demetrius retreated to Tripoli while Ptolemy advanced all the way to Sidon. Ptolemy gave Seleucus 800 infantry and 200 cavalry. He also had his friends accompanying him, perhaps the same fifty who escaped with him from Babylon. On the way to Babylon Seleucus recruited more soldiers from the colonies along the route. He finally had about 3,000 soldiers. In Babylon, Pethon's commander, Diphilus, barricaded himself in the city's fortress. Seleucus conquered Babylon with great speed and the fortress was also quickly captured. Seleucus' friends who had stayed in Babylon were released from captivity. His return to Babylon was afterwards officially regarded as the beginning of the Seleucid Empire and that year as the first of the Seleucid era.